Um, I, I did know that it was it was a it, it was like a fan favorite ish type of role. Um, I'm just excited to play it out in the full spectrum. You know, uh, it's such a wonderful story of of a kid just try of a kid just trying to like you know prove himself and do what he needs to do to kind of make his mark on the world. But then if it turns into something great, you know, it's he's the embodiment of the idea that love can thrive in even the most ridiculous of situations. So I'm really excited to play that. How does the TV series affect your comic writing since it started? Um, you know, we can see the source material obviously in the series, but has sure. anything trickled into, into your... I, I hope not. I mean, I, I, uh, I try not to allow anything from the show to influence me comic book wise. I know that... Uh, uh, I, I, sometimes I find myself like holding back at times like when I had kids I, I started holding back in the book and, it, and it, it made me realize like you don't want to do this to this character because you have a child yourself and you're being a sissy and so I would just force myself to do it anyway and so uh, I've always kind of tried to push myself to not let anything change what I've been doing just because the book has been fairly successful and people like it and I don't want it to suddenly be different in any way uh, but you know it's very hard to, to keep the you know that kind of stuff pure. But uh, I think I'm doing an okay job with it, and it does help that the comic book series has been running for so long that I'm really telling completely different stories than what are being done in the show now. So uh, able to keep them separate. How do you manage the time and not have it cut into your comic book? Well, I've invented a machine <laughs> that uh, uh, no, I, I, you know, uh, uh, television writers are uh, you know they're very uh, you know very laid back, easy people to. Uh, work with and uh, you know writer's room you know you're working like four or five maybe six hours a day I'm a 10 hour day guy I uh, I feel like I'm lazy if I'm not uh, you know putting in the hours sometimes 12 I mean if I'm not spending time with my wife and kids I am working I usually don't do anything else I'm boring to have conversations with I don't like to go out so uh, you know I, I like to work I found it really interesting that uh, the script that you wrote last season was one of the scripts that had a large plot line that was completely original mm -hmm. to the show, would have to be the one that you wrote. Are you, can you say whether you're writing any more scripts this season and whether you're introducing some more original stuff to, to the mix? Or? Yeah, well, I'm writing the second episode this season, and I'm in the room full time. So there's little things in each episode that I've suggested. I, I hate to admit to it, but I am kind of the, like... Frank, you know, wants to diverge at times and stuff, but I'm really the guy that's like, no, let's do this, and no, it's great, like, let's have this happen, people won't be expecting that, and I have done this story, and so to a certain extent, it's like, do you really want to do the camp attack that way, because I would change this and this, and maybe it'd be neat if we did this, and it's basically just me being a writer, not wanting to write the exact same thing again, so... Uh, I'm constantly pushing to, to add new things. And I think as long as the new things that we add to the television show are awesome, I think that uh, fans will be on board for it. So I'm always pushing. Is there a sort of criteria that you can speak to with the stuff that you do choose? Because we were actually just talking with Lori about, um, about uh, Amy leaving the show and mm -hmm. how that is in the book roughly about the same time. And it, it struck me that, that keeping that in the show when it happens is a wise move at that point in the first season. It really kind of sets up the audience who aren't familiar with the books that, you know, you can't, that anyone is fair game. And it yeah. kind of gives them that right up front. Well, it's that, it's that in a big way, just making sure that the audience knows that, you know, every character is on shaky ground and anything could happen at any moment. But as far as specific story points that, that make it from the book into the TV show, uh, anything that uh, affects the character, the other characters around it. So, like, Amy's death has a really important aspect on, on Andrea's character and how she grows moving forward. And so that's the kind of stuff that you have to maintain. So, and I always point to that when people are like, oh, you know, why are you diverging? And well, what's, what's the changes? And it's like, there, you know, we have the, the you know, stuff that you can't change and then, you know, throw some things in the mix. Do you have any idea when you would do no, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I, uh, uh, doing the comic book and knowing the subject matter and seeing what's on TV, because I have a television, I turn it on and I don't see zombies ever, you know, uh, 
it's a show of you know it's, it's a comic book about people getting eaten alive and torn apart and you know zombies and stuff and uh, I never thought in a million years it would ever get adapted into a television show and I didn't think it was good you know for a movie just because it is a continuing narrative and it kind of works against everything that movies are so I was content to just sit in Kentucky and keep doing the comic book and I'll be honest I was having a good time doing it but uh, I kind of like having a TV show so I'm glad it worked out. 